And I'll, I'll just start with this. Listen, Cornell's a really good team. We saw that on film, and they play a unique style from the standpoint of their spacing, the amount of guys that can shoot, and their cutting, their passing. On a quick turnaround, or quick, really, not a lot of time to prepare. I was really proud of how our guys made some adjustments throughout the game to, to you know, ultimately get the win. So, any questions? Sorry, we were Yeah. Uh, Jake Bruce didn't play the final 10 minutes. Is he okay? And, and how was that navigating without Bruce on the floor? Well, it's hard to navigate without Bruce on the floor. He's, he's a special player, but um, sprained his ankle and you know he'll be evaluated you know as soon as we can. So. In the first half, what was it that was so challenging about their offense? A lot of backdoor cuts, easy success. It felt like there early they get a ten point lead. And what kind of adjustments did you guys make? Yeah, against them you have to change your your help and your gaps because if you get off the if you get away from your man protect what will be a normal gap. It just They're so good at cutting. So that was a big adjustment because it's something we've gotten better at and, and focused on over time. And it was, we, we practiced for a day really in a shoot around to try to make that adjustment. As the game went on and got started, we, we reverted back to kind of what we've done really well. This game that opened up some lanes for them to cut. And our guys were able to adjust though. I thought, you know, throughout the game, we got better at it, but that was a, that was a big difference, just our health position. I think one of the main difference makers in this game when you look at the you know, schedule of the stat line for you guys was rebounding. And that, that, that was a topic of conversation down the stretch, an area you felt you know, the team needed to get better in. And had eight guys, I think, with at least four rebounds. So, so what do you see in, in terms of the collective rebounding effort in the team? I thought it was it was great, both, both sides of the ball. You know, we were able to finish some plays and we got on the offensive glass. It, it was really impressive. We felt that was an area we needed to, to be aggressive and assert ourselves in was, was on the offensive glass. So obviously Felix uh, set the tone with that, the seven offensive rebounds. But we held him to, I, think, I believe it was zero offensive rebounds in the first half. They got a few there throughout the second half. But rebounding we knew was going to be really important. And we felt like it was an advantage for us. So I thought our guys stepped up. In that final minute, it was there were a bunch of different guys making important plays down the stretch. Uh, not just Jameson's three, but Evans' pass, and Evans finishing that play, you know, leading a couple big free throws. I, but I guess what was it like to see, you know, so many different guys come up with you know, important plays in that final minute? That's been the key the last, you know, now I think five weeks is we've talked about the depth of this team. There's a lot of great pieces and they've really come together and you're seeing it with the way they're sharing the ball and reading the game. So I'm not surprised and I think it's part of the challenge, you know, coaching them is figuring out maybe who has it, who's got the hot hand at the right time. And we have just so many unselfish guys who are capable of, of doing great things for us. So it, it, it's pretty natural. Jake, you got a handful of programs, high major programs that couldn't play in the NIT that for one reason or another said we don't want to play in the NIT. How do you think this is going to benefit your guys, especially the guys that have eligibility that are going to be back, the freshmen and sophomores, to play in this kind of tournament? Um, like you said, a quick turnaround with a day to prepare. How is this going to benefit them in the long run? Yeah, for a lot of the guys on this team, it's their first postseason experience. And proud of how we were able to get a win. I think that that first game is, is so tough. It's certainly, we had big aspirations, especially towards the end of the season, of making the NCAA tournament. But our guys talked and you know felt like they wanted to pursue this postseason. And our guys played hard. This was a, a unique game. You saw their effort. You saw the toughness. You saw the togetherness. But I just our guys were locked in and they were committed to to giving all they had. Um, do you teach, I guess, like composure and staying composed when you know Cornell has a guy that gets teed up, but it looked like he was kind of going at your guys after every made basket. None of your guys really snap back at him, and then in the end, you, know, you get the free throws because your guys stay composed. Is that something that you have to kind of hammer home to not snap back, or is that something that some of your guys just have that maturity already? There's a balance. You know, we want to play with, with some toughness and aggressiveness, and throughout the flow of the game, there's, you know, some conversations that happen. But yeah, our guys, our guys, there's a maturity to this team. There's a poise required specifically as, as you know, the game tightens. And I, I thought, I thought our guys showed great poise.
Yeah, Jake, yesterday you had probably the biggest moment of your career, coaching career, really getting elevated as a head coach, and then a day later you get have to prepare for a top Cornell team. So what was that, I guess, sequence like for you in the last two days, just the, the adjustment period to just like focus on something else instead of the getting up and elevated head coach? Practice yeah. was the most normal part of the day. Um, yesterday was a really special day, but, and obviously I had a bunch of family here. We have so many former players here and, and all of that meant so much to me, Buckeye Nation. There was, there was just, it was really special, but I was happy to get to practice, to be able to just coach and prepare for a game where, you know, your season is on the line. But leading into that press conference and, and all the things before that, there was a lot of different emotions. Practice was the, was the best part of the day, though. Coach, I would characterize the way they played tonight as being a clever brand of basketball and totally apart from the rest of the Big Ten in that respect. Would you say the same thing about that? And can you compare them to anything you've seen thus far in the Big Ten? Yeah, I think they're well coached. You know, that's a great way to put it. They, uh, they have great chemistry and a lot of skill. I think the closest team we would see in league may be a, a Nebraska with just having you know, a big that can shoot like, like theirs in the space, the five out spacing, the cutting, uh, the three point field goal attempts. Nebraska is probably the closest in the Big Ten to, to compare. Thank you. After you saw, looked up and saw the crowd, I guess before the game, uh, the upper decks were closed off, but I guess down the stretch, how much did the environment, how much did the crowd help you guys out? big laws and just down stretch the environment. I thought Buckeye Nation, the, everybody here was great. This was a quick turnaround. There wasn't a lot of time to prepare and plan and, you know, all of those things. So really appreciative of everybody that came out. The energy in the building was awesome. And it was, it helped. It helped us, you know, finish the game. And so thank you to everybody who showed up. You know, I, it was, it's, I don't know what to expect, right? With such a, just a quick, from the time you find out who you're playing, when you're playing, to when you're actually playing the game, I, I thought I thought the support was awesome. Jake, you've had games that have come down to the last seconds when you've been coaching here. Uh, this is the first time you've been in a situation game on the line, and you're in huddles that are late. Did your voice feel any different coaching a team through a situation where it's the game's up and up for grabs, it's the final minute, and if you lose, you go home? Did, did anything feel different when you were in, in any of those moments, knowing this was all firmly on your shoulders this time? No, no, I think the reps that you know, I've been able to get here over the last month have, have helped. And we've talked about staying aggressive, no matter if you're up. We've been in situations this last month where we've been up three, down two, going into the last you know four minutes. So we're going to stay aggressive. We're going to play to win. And that that's not going to change. So it didn't change because this was kind of a you know win or go home game. We just, we stayed the course, we stuck with what's worked, we stuck with, you know, how we're gonna be as a program moving forward. And listen, guys need to stay aggressive so they can be the ones to step up and make plays. That's what you saw. You saw it like Jamison's three it was big time. The, the, the read of the press break and that's, that's players doing that because they're playing aggressive with confidence and they know that, you know, we believe them. And you talked about having to co cope without Bruce, uh, you, without Scotty as well. Do you have any update on his situation going forward? And how did that also stress some of your rotations and some of your lineups? Yeah, we, it, it, it caused some adjustments, certainly, through the, through the flow of the game. Scotty and I have been in contact today. Um, we, we're thinking of him and praying for him and his family. And, um, you know, I haven't talked to him since the game's been over yet, but I'm sure we'll touch base soon. Kind of like Adam's question. Did this feel any different for you? Not so much the team and the players, but you know, two days ago you were one thing, now you're did was there anything different? Did you feel more pressure? Did you know now that you are the guy? Um, and yeah. That no, um, not once the game started. I, I think leading into the game it was a little bit different. A little different feeling, kind of the 
I try to keep the routine that I've been doing before games as the exact same. But yeah, is it okay to admit a little with a little vulnerability that it felt, you know, maybe a little different? I think. But once the game started, it was it was back to doing what I love and, and you know, coaching guys and coaching hard and you know, coaching with passion and energy. And we got a great group that you know makes this really fun. So I just leaned into that. You're kind of learning on the job in some ways because of the, the small sample size. But does a game like this actually maybe help you? Because uh, you've really got to coach versus maybe winning by 25 or 30. Maybe yeah. When you look back on it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I'm sure when there's time to kind of look back and reflect and say like, oh yeah, that was that was a great experience. But um, in that in that moment, it's it's all about that moment, and that's what I've stuck with the time I was asked to, to do this and that wasn't going to change today certainly. And when did you find out their leading scorer was on crutches and not going to play? Uh, kind of about midway through warm-ups. Yeah, midway midway through warm-ups. The, the unique thing about this today, we knew going into this game they had like eight different guys who could score double figures. They had great depth and versatility so their system is so they have good players certainly but their system is really good and they've got veterans who've been in it for a while. So I didn't feel like that was gonna, you know, I'm sure they would love to have him. He's a good player. We respected him, we saw it on film, but they had guys step up, you know, just like we did at the end of the game without Bruce. But yeah, there's, it was more for us, this game was less about personnel. It wasn't as much ISO, it was just that, that system they run, which was unique for us to see. But yeah, it, it was, uh, we just kind of moved on quickly when we saw it went now. You talked about what the players could get out of playing this. What do you get out of coaching for another however many games here and, and kind of getting that experience before it really starts to change next year? Yeah, I think, you know, it's been talked about like it's, it's a great experience for me. Um, but ultimately, I, I love doing this. So that's the best part. Like, I, Wish we could have games all year long. You know, I, I love it. It's so. This was great for for all of us, um, players, myself, staff, and um, I think that experience will, will continue to, to grow and build. But again, that's not what I'm thinking about or processing in the moment. It's it's instincts. It's it's relying on prep. It's staying in the moment, I, and that's I think that's been important. It looks like Nick may have moved up a seat, or however you want to phrase that. Uh, what did he bring, and what did you think of him uh, doing what he was doing? Tonight? Yeah, we, we've. It's been um, obviously since the middle of February. There's been a lot of adjustments and change within the staff, and I think guys have stepped up. Several different guys have stepped up. Nick did a great job. Got to deliver uh, some film and some scouting stuff, you know, for the first time, which is a great experience for him. So we've been, we've embraced, you know, we've embraced change. I think there's that's been that's been obvious, and everybody's had to step up and adapt as staff, players, everybody within the program. So it was good. All right, cool. Okay, thanks. All right, guys. Thanks.